What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. It's been a while since we recorded one of these, Andrew. I might be out of practice. If you're new to what we do, well, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, founder of Whistlekick, lover of all things martial arts, joined by my good friend, Andrew Adams, who also loves all things martial arts. And what do we do here at Whistlekick? Well, Whistlekick is more than just martial arts radio, but on martial arts radio, we connect with you. We educate you if we're doing our job well, and we entertain you if you're doing your job well, job well. Because we're funny, and if you don't think so, then that's all. <laughs> but what do we do at Whistlekick? Our goal at Whistlekick is to get everyone in the world to train for six months. And that's a really big goal, and we need your help. And how can you help us do that? Well, you can continue to watch, consume, listen to, and read our content, whether that's through Martial Arts Radio, our social media channels, the books that we produce on Amazon, Marshall Journal, any of the things like that. But if you're up for supporting us financially, because the things that we do do cost some money, please consider supporting us. Our Patreon is a big part of what we do here to support the show. And if you go to patreon.com slash whistlekick, you can get some bonus merch. You can get some behind the scenes stuff and you can get some exclusive content. You know, we work really hard to make sure that the people who contribute to us get the clearest picture of what we're doing, the most uncensored, raw at times. I mean, usually if I record stuff for Patreon, it's one take. If I flub it, I'm going to tell you <laughs> why I flubbed it, right? Like you, you're in there, you see what's going on. Yep. But you could also support us in a lot of other ways. Come to our events, buy stuff at whistlekick.com, check out a training program. If you have a school, wkalliance.com, the Whistlekick Alliance is a group of martial arts schools where we do a ton of work to help you grow and it is working. It has been incredible. I'm so honored that we have that and I get to lead it. But now to the show. To the show. To the, to the, to the show. show. Wait, I'm glad I didn't go that way. We went the, we went the same direction somehow. <laughs> so the, 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 the title, unless we refine it later, Andrew, when is it time to leave? Mm -hmm. And of course we're talking about leaving a martial arts school because hopefully nobody's leaving martial arts. Yeah, I, right? no I would. What I would not want to life. advocate leaving martial arts in general. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you have a bad experience at a school, that shouldn't mean you stop training. It should mean you find another school. If you have, have a bad experience in competition, maybe you stop competing. Hopefully not, but if you do, fine. But it doesn't mean you stop training, right? So we're talking about leaving four walls, right? I'm not going to be here anymore. How many martial arts schools have you left? Um, I'm one, thinking two. Well, three. Three, four, five, Jeremy's thinking. For those that are just listening, Jeremy's thinking. Six. Counting. I think I'm at six or seven okay. that I've left. You could kind of call a half in there. I, I, I faded. I didn't leave. Mm -hmm. I would go back in a heartbeat. It's just, it's a logistical thing. And can I ask of those six slash seven, were your reasons for leaving the six, were they, was the reason the same for all of them? Or they one stands reasons? out differently, but most of them, the, 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 the not one, right? The five life took me to a different physical location. Yeah. And, and I think that's a great place to start because I don't want to talk about those reasons. Right? Like, I think we can just say, when is it time to leave? Well, sometimes it's when you move away for whatever reason. Like, There's not a lot you can do about that. Exactly. Exactly. We're not going to tell you, you know, don't take that job. Don't go to college. Don't do these things yeah, because yeah. you have a great martial arts school. No, if absolutely. Time, life takes you in a different direction. Then it's about finding another way to train and maintain your training, find another school, whatever it is. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean you're not still necessarily connected to that school. As an example, uh, the Shotokan school that I left, um, you know, I was there for 15, 16 years. I left because I moved three hours away, right? I'm not going to be driving three I'm hours crazy. every Wednesday for, for to go to class. However, uh, when I'm on vacation in July, my wife and I and the family were vacationing near where that school is. So I'm planning on going to class on Wednesday because I'm only going to be 45 minutes away. Oh, nice. 
So is that like, the one in, so you, in, in Vermont? What's that? Is that the one in Vermont? No, no, no. It's in northern New Hampshire, in Bethlehem, New Hampshire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So um, so I'm, I mean, I'm still connected to the school. I just and I would not say that I am a student at that school anymore. Um, and, and I think I think everybody's everybody gets that. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. life takes us in directions. So that's not what we're talking about. We're going to put that over there. We are talking in generality. You don't have to leave. But you feel you have to leave. You, you, or you've chosen to leave for a different reason other than logistics. So where do we start there? Because there are a whole bunch of reasons, but I think we can probably sum them up into two categories. Okay. I need more. I don't like what's going on. Sure. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and it could be a combination of both as well. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking if there's a third... Um, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, no, I think I think those are two the two that I I can't think of a third. Everything you, I can come up with fits under one of those two headings. Yeah, so let's, like, let's, I mean, I've got three or four different things in my head, but you're right; they fall under one one of those two. Let, let's start with the I need more. Yep, because I think that's a shorter list. Uh, it is a less inflammatory list. Yep, sure, and it's a much less common occurrence. Right. Yeah, I, I probably less common if. Just from my experience, from, from the conversations that I have with people here on the show, the times people leave because they need or want more doesn't come up very often. So yeah. we're talking about maybe, because I've had this conversation with one of my instructors. I don't feel like I have anything left to teach you. I want you to go over there. Mm -hmm. Right? That might happen. Yep. Or... Um, I've been training in this for a while and it's exposing to me that, that I kind of feel like I want to do some of this, right? Maybe you've spent your time as a striker and you're really interested in grappling and your school doesn't offer grappling, right? Yep. I think that's kind of the, the, the general gist of I need or want more. There's something that I'm seeking that mm -hmm. my school cannot provide to me. So I want to add one more to that, please, which, and again, this probably doesn't happen a lot, but I definitely can see it happening and know of it happening. Um, my instructor's a fourth degree black belt and I get to third degree black belt and I can't, putting this in air quotes for those that are only listening, can't progress any further. Certainly there are still things they can teach, but in terms of rank, I can't gain any more rank from my instructor. So either my instructor has to continue to train, which that starts to fall into the other category, uh, but they would have to continue to train so they could gain more rank so that I could gain more rank. Yeah. And, 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 there, and that happens. Yeah. There, there are schools out there that are smaller and the instructor has been at that same rank for decades because maybe they're just not interested or maybe they've lost affiliation or, or association with a group or for whatever reason, they're not going to promote. And so they're, they're at fourth degree and you're third degree and going, you know what you want to leave. I, I get it. If, if it becoming fourth, fifth and progressing on is important to you, I can't do that for you. It's not uh, me changing the things I've got to change in my life. So you can do that in the future. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And here's the thing that I think is really interesting about the way we've, we've split this. This first category, this first heading that we're digging into, much of the time, if it's handled, if, if you as the student approach the instructor and have a respectful conversation, it usually goes really well. It can, it's usually, sure. You know what? I don't offer BJJ. I'm not going to be able to promote you further. Yeah. Um, I've, you're, you're right. I've got a good thing going with the way I teach classes and you want to be able to dig into more nitty gritty detail. And we're just not going to be able to provide that. I support you going off and doing your own thing. And, and, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, cause when we do these episodes, you and I tend to be very academic and intellectual and we don't always talk about action items that people can take. 
And so I think this is a place where we really want to underscore, and I, I think you and I are on the same page, I'm going to guess this, that if, if this sort of stuff that we're talking about here is you, have a conversation with your instructor. Mm -hmm. Have an open, honest, respectful conversation with your instructor. Because if you are one of these people, you've been training with that person a while. Yep. You've built a relationship with them. And if you don't feel comfortable having a conversation with them, it's for one of two reasons. It's because you're not willing to, because you're scared, that's on you, or they're going to fall into the second category of person we're talking about. And you've got a different situation that we'll get into in a moment. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. I would definitely agree. Um, you know, it's very similar, not exactly, but similar to something that happens in uh, bands that I teach for those that are listening for the first time, I teach drumming and it's very common for drummers to progress to be the level that their instructor is and their instructor isn't getting better. And so that drummer will start to seek, you know, getting instruction from somewhere else. And it absolutely happens. Uh, and if you hold a student back because you are afraid that they're going to leave you, you're doing nothing but hurting yourself yeah. on top of hurting them in terms of their ability. Um, but those people absolutely exist um, instead of, and let's, you know, we'll talk of it in terms of, of groups in, in terms of a band, right? Drummers getting better in the band and they want to go off and play with a better quote unquote, better band. One that's going to challenge them more, mm. which will make them get even better. I have seen two, basically two things happen. One, the drummer of the lower, the drummer in charge of the lower band says, no, you can't go, blah, 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 blah. And there ends up being a butting of the heads. That drummer ends up leaving anyway to go to the higher grade, the higher level band. They're going to get better and there's bad blood. The other option is, and I've been in this situation, and this is what I did. I said, you know what? Absolutely. Like, I'm excited for you to go off and have this a, a chance to play at this higher level. And they left the band. The drummer in, I'm speaking of had been a student of mine for years. He is, without a doubt, a better drummer than I am now. And Definitely. we are incredibly close. And I know that if I called him up right now and said, hey, you know, you're going to be you know, up in this area in a you know, couple months, would you come and work with my guys? Like absolutely no questions asked because we have a good relationship. And before they moved away completely, like they went to play with this other band and didn't play with us, but he still lived in town and he worked with us and helped the group get better. I don't remember what episode it was, but we did an episode where we worked through the, the logical sort of math of your goal as an instructor should be to help your students become better than you. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Yep. And I think a lot of instructors, even if they haven't thought of it that way, do embrace that philosophy. They do mm -hmm. want what is best for their students. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign of a great school. And that's the kind of school absolutely. you should be at. And it can be really sad, really difficult when you reach a point where that is the sort of school you're at. And you want more and they can't provide it. That is a difficult decision. Yep. And when I first started hosting these episodes with you, when I came on board as co-host, one of the phrases that came up a lot was open, clear communication. And it's so valuable. And I want to make it very clear. This is a two-way street. The student needs to be able to have really good communication with their instructor. Their instructor has to be the same. And, uh, you know, I most recently left a, a, a school partly because there was very bad communication. And I, I think that caused a lot of problems with my training within the school. And not just myself. I know there are other students as well that have issues with poor communication. And I think that is what makes it difficult when you are looking to get more, but your instructor is not open communicating we should have do an episode on communication at some point and talk mm -hmm. about not just uh, styles and qualities and, and effective methods of communication, but responsibilities. Sure. I, I think that's, we, we could put that on the list. 
because I, I, I have this saying that, that has come through in, in the business consulting work that I do with the rare exception where people are jerks, all problems in business come down to communication issues. Yeah. I, I would, I would tend to agree. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you may not agree listeners, viewers, audience, but if you, if you dig into it enough, either it's a communication problem or somebody's being a jerk. Those are really the two possibilities. Now, I suspect that most people tuned into this episode because of this next category that we're going to get into. Yep. The, not the warm, fuzzy, there isn't anything left for me here. I want more and different. It's the, whew, there's an issue. Yep, yep, I would agree. We should talk about what some of these issues are mm -hmm. because I get email feedback from people and sometimes they're afraid that the things they're experiencing, they're alone. Yeah. And so I very think rarely, I think they're alone. That we get this down. So people out there know they're not alone. So issues that could come up that might warrant you leaving the school, uh, physical abuse, mm -hmm. sexual abuse, Yep. Uh, Cult-like behavior. Um, a culture that is hyper-focused on punishment rather than improvement. Mm -hmm. If you th throw in as, as you're thinking of them. Um, being taken advantage of being taken advantage of financially, uh, maybe your, your upper rank, your time. Mm -hmm. um, the stress, dishonesty. The, dishonesty, the stress of, because you have an instructor that does not communicate well, just the stress of not knowing how things are going to work out. That absolutely can cause issues for people. Uh, lack, if, uh, lack of clear expectations, yep. lack of clear responsibilities, lack mm -hmm. of clear boundaries, mm -hmm. right? So that goes back to your, your open, clear communication yep. statement, right? Um, All those things kind of fall into there. Be, just being st in a stagnant place. And, and I don't mean just you personally, like the school just being stagnant and not having any growth. If you're looking for more then that's going to be a problem. Which usually, that usually tracks back to an instructor who really doesn't want to do what they're doing. They see it only as uh, a financial vehicle for them. And so mm -hmm. their classes, let's say, are increasingly repetitive. They don't want to do things to bring in new students. Um, they're just kind of on the lather, rinse, repeat model of martial arts training. Yep, yep. And I think... In that particular case, most, and I'm curious if you would agree, most of those types of instructors are probably not getting instruction themselves. Yeah. Yeah. One uh, of the and things... Because and they're happy, they're stagnant within themselves, so they are fine with their, their students also... I, I disagree with them being fine. Okay. They've accepted it, and that's... It, because here's they're, what I want to say... Um, I think most people out there know that I work with martial arts schools. I consult with them. The first thing that we have to solve for almost every school that I've worked with is the person at the top being passionate about their own training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That if I, if, if I, I've, I've tried time and again, if we don't check that box, if I can't find a way to help them feel good about their training, unfortunately we've got great options with whistle kick. I'm like, you need to meet some of these other schools and tra cross yeah, train yeah, yeah. and come hang out with these great people. But if I can't get them to do that, they approach it solely as a business. And there is nothing wrong with that other than this is a very different kind of business. And if you don't have passion for what you are doing, you are teaching the people below you that it's not something to be passionate about. It's something that you just kind of do. Yeah. And I think that's a great point. And we did an episode on what makes a really good instructor. And one of the things at the top was that they recognize that there's still more to learn and they're still a student themselves. And I think that's an important piece. 
So we just laid out, I don't know, a dozen or, or so reasons under mm -hmm. this heading of something's going wrong that is making you feel like it might be time to leave. How do we know it's time to leave? How do you go from, I think it's time to leave to, I know it's time to leave. How do we give people some, some concrete process that they can go through? So, um, I mean, I'm going to preface this by saying everyone is different, right? Sure. Everyone will handle these things differently. And, and I think some of the things we talked about, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, those things are huge, immediate, boom, you're out of there for, for me, red flag, like doesn't matter. End of discussion. Some of the other things don't warrant a, the first time it happens, you leave. Now, one of the things I will say, regardless of the issue, I think having a, having a conversation is important. Now, there, there are exceptions, right? And, and I think it's incredibly narrow um, because what tends to happen in any group of people is rumors fly, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're hearing rumors that so-and-so is doing such and such under one of, you know, abuse in some way, you have not witnessed it, you don't know for sure, I think you, I'm not going to necessarily say you have a responsibility, but I would encourage you to have a conversation because even if you choose to leave afterwards, let's say, let's say the worst of the worst, right? And I'm not even going to put words to it because it's that bad. You think it's happening. You hear about it happening. Even if you have already made up your mind, because maybe you don't want to be associated with a place where that is even, uh, discussed as a possibility. If you go to the person, the instructor, and say, I'm hearing about this, whether or not it's true, I need to go, that might be enough to get it to stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. And I think that when you have the ability to, you often have the responsibility to. There's the a reason in my mind those words are so closely connected. Yeah, that makes sense. The one thing I would add is if that is ha if it's an uh, an abuse issue happening to you, I would understand not wanting to go. That anymore. is different because now you can hundred percent check that box. Yeah. If 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 I was at a school and and you know what I was at one, I was at a school and I've shared this story briefly. Uh, I was having a knee issue. Uh, I told the head instructor I'm having a knee issue. Assistant instructor was correcting my stance by kicking out the back of my knee because they didn't communicate. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, I'm having knee problems. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. He was assuming the worst of me. Yeah. That was enough for me. Okay. So we've got a communication issue. Right. And so that was my last class. I didn't sure. go back. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Communication for sure. So almost regardless, step one, as I'm thinking about this, I think I need to make this step. I think I need to go. I think it's time to leave. Hey, person in charge, I need to have a chat with you. Now, some schools have so many people and so many instructors at the top. You might not get to talk to that top person. Go as high in, the, in there as you can go. And if you're not comfortable going that high, maybe it's someone you don't know well, go as high as you are comfortable have that conversation with, with someone because it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get resolution. But like I said, if you care about that school at all, and if you're there, you do, right? If you're still there, you have some element that you care about the school and the people. You can do a lot of good on your way out the door and telling them, here's what's going on. Here's why, what I'm feeling. I'm going to go. I wanted you to know why, right? In, in business, it's an exit interview. You forcing your own exit interview could lead to a positive change in that school and the lives of other people. How often do we get to have a difficult 20 minute conversation that has the potential to make dozens or even hundreds of lives better? It's not common. Take the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. The, here's what I will also add is that sometimes that's hard for multiple reasons. It could be hard because you as a person have a difficult time communicating, right? Sure. I recognize that. It could be hard because your instructor may be so difficult to communicate with 
that it makes it difficult for you to actually sit down with them and have a discussion with them. So what could you do in that case? Yeah, I mean, you write them, write them a letter, you know, te text them, that was whatever. A clicking if you're listening. <laughs> um, and it, there's a lot of nuance to this, right? And sure. and it makes it even more difficult when there are multiple things. You know, in my case, there were multiple issues that led to me leaving the school that I just left. Um, it, I, I can't tell you it was one thing. Um, it's rarely one thing. Yeah. Uh, and if it had been just one thing... I probably wouldn't have left. You know, I worked towards getting those that, you know, the communication was a big thing. Um, you know, I don't, I don't expect any instructor to be able to, you know, respond to every single student's text message within five minutes. Right. Um, and I want to make it clear. The school that I left is very small. There are six adult students. Um, and I was the highest ranked student in the school. And if I, if I texted my instructor something, I wouldn't hear from him for three, four, five days. If ever I would show up at class and we would then talk about the thing that I asked him the question on. Um, if that was the only issue, you know, I, I could live with that, but there are other things too, to think about. Right. What we're talking about here, whether we're talking about the communication or we're talking about I feel very strongly it, you, you've got to have a conversation before you depart. It's because there's a relationship, mm -hmm. right? If, if you and I are married and I want to divorce you, I have a responsibility to have a conversation with you. Ideally before I finalize that decision, mm -hmm. student teacher is another kind of relationship. Sure. And a relationship carries responsibility on both sides. To sever that relationship without giving the other person the courtesy of a conversation, again, with, with the exception of these rare, rare times when things are so absolutely toxic, it comes down for most people to, I'm afraid of the conflict. Tough. Hmm. When you think you can't, that's when you need to. And if you're being very clear with yourself, I'm unwilling to have this conversation because I'm scared of conflict, that doesn't absolve you of what I truly believe to be your responsibility to do so. Now, if it's my instructor is toxic and may fly off the handle and punch me in the face because I've heard about them doing it before, that's a whole different scenario. <laughs> and I come back to writing a letter. Yeah, sure. Make the best effort you can in that place. Here's a question for you. Sure. What if you have, and I, I think I know the answer, but I'm, gonna, I'm throwing devil's advocate out at you. Yeah. Uh, you are feeling disrespected or taken advantage of, used. Um, we're not talking physical abuse mm -hmm. or anything like that. Um, and you have tried to make things work, but it's clear that your instructor has no intention of, or not intention, does not have the ability to fix the things that you are unhappy with. And you just feel so dejected that, you know, there's no point, there's going to be no closure for you in having that conversation with the instructor. This is where I come back to. It's not just about you, mm. right? Years ago, and, and it's funny that this episode comes to my mind so often, because I even remember when and where I recorded it. I recorded it in the car driving solo, martial mm. arts as service. Yep. The idea that martial art, that your participation in a martial arts class is exclusively <laughs> selfish is, is a I think, a, a very inaccurate way to look at it. Because... An instructor needs students in order to progress as an instructor. Your fellow students are better because you're there on the floor with them, right? Your participation lifts everything up. And so if you're going to remove yourself from that group, from that participation, every, regardless of what, whether it is justified, everyone else does suffer from your departure. Mm -hmm. 
And I believe that you have a responsibility to take that conversation, that exit interview, whatever you want to call it, as far as you can for their benefit. I'm not saying that that conversation, that letter is going to change the result for you or for, for anyone else. In fact, quite often when you've made up your mind, that's when it's easiest to have this conversation. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Or to send this email. And the reason I default to in-person is because communication problems usually arise in written communication. Yeah, because you can't understand tone in a, in a uh, written... More than 80% of communication is nonverbal. Yeah. Right, so if you can get across the, the, across the table, across the desk, across the internet from somebody else, you can understand things a lot better. One of, one of the things that I, and I, I hate this because I'm very conflict averse, but the moment I'm having a conversation with someone via email or text and I start to feel emotional about it, that's my trigger. I've got to be able to, I've got to be able to see you. I've, I've at least got to be able to hear you with a phone call, but ideally a Zoom or in person. I've got yeah. to be able to do that because it's, it's that dip where you feel emotional that things are most likely to go awry. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. How do we sum all this up? It's subjective. Yeah. When is it time to leave? You know, when it's time to leave. Yeah. yeah. If you're being really honest with yourself, it's time to leave. If you have to ask the question, is it time to leave? It's probably not time to leave. Mm -hmm. It's time to leave. And you're like, I have to do this, but I don't want to. Yep. Yep. And, and, and that, that's what, where it was for me. That's where it was for me. You know, it, yeah, I you, had, you, we've started having these conversations a, a while ago. We've talked about this scenario for you for a little while. Yeah, it's been over a year, probably a couple of years. And, and you know, after I left, I've been thinking more and more about it because it just because I left doesn't mean that my feelings have gone away. Right. Um, you know, it the what I think started to stem the issue for me was uh, and I can pinpoint it specifically. It was October of 2019. It's been almost five years. Four years. Four years. Now, yeah. we're not going to dig into the specifics because we don't have to, but there no. is one point that we keep hitting, and it's that conversation before you go. You had multiple conversations before you went. Are you mm -hmm. glad that you did? Yes. Yeah. And, and ultimately, uh, because of the lack of communication I was getting, I, I, I had a hard time knowing whether I was going to – if there was class. Like there, in one particular instance, like I didn't know there was going to be class. So I, I sent, ultimately I sent a text message and said, you know, that my, my journey is, is taking me elsewhere. Uh, and, you know, I wish them well. And, and the response I got back was very nice. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not terribly surprised. I think he saw the, the writing on the wall and saw that I was unhappy with things. And he said, you know, I, I, this isn't terribly surprising to me. You know, thank you so much. I wish you well. You were kind. You were mm -hmm. respectful. You didn't feel the need to burn the house down. No, nope. nope. it was about you and what was best for you. Yes. And I uh, think quite often, I think this is, this might be the last point we need to, to mention to people quite often when we make a decision, especially an emotional decision, because people make decisions based on emotion and then they backfill with logic. Mm -hmm. You don't need to justify your decision to anyone, at least on this subject, right? Where you train first freedom of martial arts, you don't need to justify where you train to anybody but yourself. Yep. Yep. So if, if you start feeling like, okay, I'm going to go and you start coming up with all these reasons and you're telling him, well, you know, because he did this or she did that and this and, and, this, and, and this and this and this and this and you feel like you need to defend yourself before anything's even happened, you run the risk of, of, of tearing the place down for other people. Mm -hmm. Don't do that to them. If yeah. you want to go because it doesn't work for you, just go. Mm -hmm. When you know it's time to go, it's time to go. But don't compromise other people's experience because they also have the freedom to train there just as you have the freedom to not. Yeah, I, I can't, I agree wholeheartedly and I, I can't stress that enough. 
even if pause unless the reason you left had something to do with abuse yeah the other students do not need to know why you're leaving yeah. right um you know in my case because as i mentioned earlier very small school six adult students at most when i was there um and a couple of them were, were black belts that i'm fairly close to um i just sent them a short message and said just so you know, uh, I let Sensei know today that I'm no longer a student. Um, I just wanted you to hear from me before you heard from someone else. Um, if you want to get together and have a beer to chat about it more, I'm happy to do so. But it, but I wasn't like, these are all the mistakes that were made for me. My that, journey. Here's the difference. difference. The communication you made with them, with these other students, you were making it for them, about them, versus yep. if you're, hey, let's get together. I want to tell you all the things that Sensei screwed up. Yeah, yeah. No. That's about you, right? Correct. There's a big difference there, and it's important to note that difference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I just, you know, wanted them to, to have a heads up. So, yeah. because inevitably I knew that I would stop showing up in class and those students would start asking my instructor about it. And it then, could potentially put him in a weird situation in a, fu in a funny place. Yeah. 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 And so again, I, you were being respectful to everyone, even on your way out the door. That's yeah. what a good martial artist does. Yeah. A good martial artist has integrity and character and make sure to exemplify that in every action, not just including, but especially the ones that are difficult to do. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. To the audience, did we miss anything? Is there a scenario that's come up for you that we didn't talk about? If you want to talk about it publicly, here are a couple things you can do. You can comment at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We have a separate page for every single episode. You can join the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio, and talk about it there. But maybe you've got something you want to share privately. You can reach out to Andrew or I privately, Andrew at Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And if you tell us, hey, this is for your eyes only, we're not going to share it. Because we don't even share stuff with each other when people do that. We might summarize, hey, I got an email from a person and they generically said this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's nice for us to know that. But unless they say, yeah, you can share this with Andrew. Or uh, if we're in doubt, we don't share things between each other from, from third parties. Because that's not what we do. But if nothing else, I hope this episode gives you some things to think about. And some, some ability to create some tools. Because unfortunately... The longer you train, the more likely you are to bump into a situation where you might need to go. Yep. And, and remember, go ahead. And remember that you are not alone. And you're not alone. And that's really important to know. So uh, be honest with yourself. Maintain your own integrity, your own code, and you'll be fine, even if it means there are some difficult things that have to happen right away. If you want to engage with us further, I gave you a few ways. But our social media is at Whistlekick everywhere you can think of. Remember, if you have a martial arts school and you're not part of WK Alliance, uh, you should be. WKAlliance.com. Check that out. Patreon. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a hoodie. Buy a training program. Because the more we're able to, to receive those funds, the more good things we can do to help you, your fellow students, and the industry as a whole. Anything else, Andrew, to add? No, I think that's good. So that takes us to the end. And until next time, train, train hard. Train hard. Smile. Smile. Have, have a great, great day. day. <laughs> that was so awful. <laughs> We're so out of practice. On we that. should get in the habit of train hard. Smile. And have a great day. When is it time to leave? Is this my mic? I mean, I hear that. Okay. Yep. I don't know that it, that's the one you're using, but... It, it seems to be. Okay. Do I sound all right? Yeah, you sound quieter than you did when we were on Facebook, but I hear you fine. Yeah, because you using this mic, but you can turn up the juice on this a little bit. Yeah, or whatever. Because ultimately, like, my, my new desk, my new old desk, because I'm just working off a table, comes in this weekend, and I'll get set up because... The way the setup is right now, I can't have the mic here. Normally, I have the mic like right here, just out of sight, and yep. I just can't do that with this setup. It'll block the camera. Yeah, and you just can't like hit the table much because then 
the camera wiggles all over. Earthquake! 